for sure. Well, welcome to the uh, last session of the day. Today we're going to um, talk about VDC case studies with the exciting panel. Uh, this uh, presentation is the last thing standing here between you and free beer. So if you can make it through this session, you'll all be rewarded with some beer. Um, so let's get right into it. Without further ado, I'll call up Jesse, I can't pronounce your, how, how would I say? Katakawa Miguel is a senior bridge architect for HNTB Corporation, creating signature bridge designs and bridge aesthetics through visualization, as well as for bridge, I got to read, for HNTB's transportation and architectural projects. He's on the TRB subcommittee on Bridge Aesthetics and has presented at the last four TRB Visualization and Transportation Symposiums. Whoa, a veteran. What was your first one? Uh, Orlando. Orlando, very good. Has anybody here been to all of them? I missed the first one, so I'm an old one as well. Key h &T bridge projects that Jesse has directed include the Leonard Zatkin Bunker Hill Memorial Bridge, wow, in Boston, the I-90 Interbelt Bridge in Cleveland, the Willamette River Transit Bridge in Portland, Oregon, the Bay Bridge West Approach in San Francisco, and the Greenville Bridge in Mississippi, the Broadway B Bridge in Little Rock, Arkansas, and the new I-70 Mississippi River Bridge in St. Louis. Today is gonna to be presenting on the role of virtual design and construction for the Huey P. Long Bridge Widening in New Orleans, and later we'll be presenting on the Sixth Street Viaduct replacement in Los Angeles that maybe you saw earlier from Kevin um, and he'll be doing that with Alfred Mata, who is the project manager of the City of Los Angeles Department for Public Works and Bureau of Engineering. So without further ado, Jesse, the, the helm is all yours. Uh, thank you, Chuck. Okay, again, my name is Jesse Miguel, um, and I'm with HMTV, and I'm going to be talking about the Huey P. Long um, bridge widening. A little bit about this project. It's located in uh, New Orleans. Um, over there you see the downtown New Orleans area, and then the area in red is the Huey P. Long Bridge that spans over the Mississippi River. Um, just a, a little bit of info, the stakeholders um, are listed as there, um, the LAD, uh, OTD, LTM, uh, New Orleans Public Belt Railway. Uh, design engineers is Majeski and Masters, and a contractor team of MTI. And, uh, and we were to, asked to be the construction engineers on how to build this bridge. A little history about the Huey P. Long Bridge, it was built in 1935. And again, this one is showing how it was built, that it was a stick-built balance cantilever construction. Uh, basically, what you see is that there was a lot of false work that they put in the river in order to build this, as well as having a cantilever off the piers. <coughs> As you notice, the bridge uh, designer is the same one that's doing the widening, uh, Majeski and Masters. So the project overview is uh, the existing bridge is a double track railway. Um, there are two rail lines in the middle of the bridge and then the cantilever outside is where the two nine foot roadway decks are in each direction. Uh, there are no shoulders on the roadway. And so the proposed bridge is that they wanna keep the, the train tracks, but then they wanted to uh, make it three 11 foot roadway lanes each way and, uh, and with some shoulders. And the idea is that the, in order to widen it, they wanted to add a truss panel both upstream and downstream. Now typically on old bridges, you know, we would end up tearing, you know, it was more economical to build a whole new bridge, but the railway insisted on keeping their line and the bridge was, uh, it was still um, pretty structurally sound. Uh, it was a pretty expensive endeavor. So here it shows you like what it looks like from uh, aerial view and then here's how it's gonna be widened. So what we have to do first is we gotta widen the bridge. Here you see the existing um, section. The, the tracks are in between, in right through the truss and then you got the nine foot roadways that are cantilevered off of there. So what they have to do is they gotta widen the, uh, the piers. They're going to encapsulate the existing pier to make it wider and install these W-shaped um, metal bridge supports. And then finally we would end up expanding the, uh, the bridge by widening the truss, that we're adding the panel both upstream and downstream in order to make that wider. Now the quest for the solution, um, 
Originally, Majeski and Masters was saying the only way we could really build this is by doing it the old-fashioned way, uh, by stick building it. And that would mean that you would have to put a lot of false work uh, right in the river. Um, and this is a pretty busy part of the Mississippi River, so that you would have to put in um, a lot of false work there. You have to add dolphins in order to protect, protect those. And, uh, and if we were to do what they call a balanced cantilever, or you would just build it off of the piers, you still needed some false work. So one of the key issues and the solutions that uh, HNTB proposed and came up with was, well, why don't we just do, why don't we just build the trusses on the, um, off the site and then uh, bring it downstream and then lift it into place? Now, just for your information, most bridges, you know, like truss bridges uh, or uh, arch bridges, um, they have floated it in, you know, they built it off-site and then they floated in and lifted up. But that's for a, a whole entire bridge that they could do that. The problem we had here is that this is an existing truss bridge. And so for us to try to put more trusses on both the upstream and downstream side, you know, it would be more problematic. Um, one of the issues was that um, they, they estimated that it would maybe take um, three months for each of the spans to build the... Um, the trusses at the site, you'd have to try to do some closures on the river. And so we came up with the proposal to build it uh, somewhere else. And, and see, these are the solutions that we kind of came up with. Uh, we had to verify the 3D model. Um, you know, it was something we had to convince um, the contractors that this would work. And so we, uh, h &TV came up with a plan to say, here's how the steps could work. But th the main thing is that they needed to see it in 3D to really be convinced. So, um, so this is a series of animation that was uh, created for that. Now, there were four spans. Uh, this is the west span. And since it's right by the, the land, um, we wouldn't have to lift it. But here it shows you the stick build system, that here you had to put some false work in part of the river, and you build each piece you know, one step at a time. And I'm not going to continue on, but you can kind of get an idea that, okay, in order to build it, you know, one step at a time, it's going to take forever. <laughs> and then um, we were proposing to lift, create lifts on the, the next three bridges. And this is the east span. This is the more trickier one because we had to determine how would the barges navigate between the two piers. And so, you know, we had to create the whole system of how it would have to swing up and under. And then put, put it in position into place. And then you've got the hydraulic jacks with that, that would come up and lift the trusses. And we had to raise it up about 120 feet. And then we had to slide it. About, uh, 12, about 12 feet. And then lower it down to its final bearing. And then once we're in that uh, position, we had to have these horn beams that would lock the truss into place. And then after that was placed in, then they would have to add some more uh, stability um, by adding more floor beams there before they release the, um, the frames to be lowered. And then when we get to the suspended span, we were doing the same thing, that we'd have to build parts of, um, parts of the bridge to be stick built to allow for the next um, lift. Now, one thing about the lift is that you have to realize that um, um, this is one of the largest types of lifts of, uh, of this format that has never been done before. Um, and the concern was that um, if you were building only the outside part of the truss, it's not going to be stable. You know, the way it is, it's built, it's, you know, it's not a stable thing to lift it up. 
So what HNTB developed was this whole system uh, where we had to uh, model the stability frames. And this is the same stability frames that are holding up the, these trusses here. And in this position, you didn't have to maneuver between the two piers. You just put it in the position and then lift it up. And then finally, on the through span, uh, the same situation that you've got the piers that are kind of tight. So the whole solution with the span by sand um, erection was again that there was no false work in the navigation spans. It was a shorter construction duration. Again, I think I told you that it would have taken about maybe three months to build each of the spans uh, if you were to do it um, from a stick built system versus six weeks uh, building the trusses off site. Uh, so we reduced the number of river closures um, by doing this. We only had to uh, close the river for the weekend every time we had to do a lift. We, we improved some worker safety. And, uh, and the other concern was hurricanes. Uh, one thing that if we were to model something or build something stick built is when the hurricanes hit, you're going to have a lot of the bridge that's not stable, so whereas with this system it would have worked out pretty well. So here are some of the photos of the construction, um, where here this is the building of the west span. And then here's the stability frame system that uh, this is where the trusses were pre-assembled off-site and then floated out, positioned the barge, and then the lift. Now, I think I have time. I'm going to, I've got a video. It's 4 o'clock in the morning. The only light spills from windows and doors on the riverbank. From the headlight on a boat ferrying workers to a barge that waits under the Huey P. Long Bridge in New Orleans. Today's job, lift 5.5 million pounds of steel. As day breaks, workers prepare themselves and a 528 foot steel bridge truss to be lifted 120 feet in the air. It's the first of three big lifts to rehabilitate the 75-year-old Huey P. Long Bridge, one of only three primary Mississippi River crossings in Greater New Orleans. This bridge is very important to the community here in the New Orleans area, and it's going to ease the commute from one side of the river to the other, and this is one of those projects that is certainly going to help this area recover from the devastating effects of Katrina. The four-phase $1.2 billion rehabilitation project will improve safety for the 50,000 daily drivers and open access to undeveloped land in Jefferson Parish. It's using a rare approach suggested by HNTB bridge experts. Pre-assemble the truss panels on the riverbank, float them downstream by barge to the bridge, and then lift the panels into place. It's not a new concept in the industry, but it is the first time such large truss panels are being lifted without top and bottom bracing. The pre-assembled truss approach is saving time and money and reducing overall project risk. Typical stick building at the bridge site takes four months. Pre-assembling is taking only six weeks. This unique solution also lessens the impact to motorists, river traffic and rail traffic, requiring only a 48-hour closure per lift. Once the project is complete, Drivers will have three 11-foot lanes in each direction, new inside and outside shoulders, new approach roadways, and new signalized intersections. It's mid-morning, and the lift is well underway, but progressing at the expected snail's pace. Every move is carefully made with precise coordination. There are no second chances with a lift like this. It has to be done perfectly the first time. The two truss panels are being hoisted simultaneously using strand jacks. An 890-ton custom stability frame supports the truss panels and keeps them plump during the lift. 
There are special lifting towers attached to two of the piers, housing 900 ton jacks that slowly pull the truss panels into place. We're probably oh, 40 feet off the barges now. The top cord just cleared the bottom cord of the existing truss, so we're making pretty good, uh, pretty good progress. Uh, we're lifting 16 inch strokes and everything between HMTB and MTI will be very closely monitored as we're going up. They're not only monitoring from the barge, but also from the top of a bridge pier. In a first-of-its-kind system, laptops are linked via wireless network to lasers and tilt meters on the truss panels. The computers capture data in real time and graphically alert the monitoring team to any misalignment, allowing them to stop the ascent and make corrections. We brought this one up level, they straightened back out to six and one and a half. We came up some more and they leveled out and stopped, we fixed it again. We came up again and it's pretty much straight. It's been holding now for about an hour. It's mid-afternoon now. The truss panels stand at final grade, ready to be moved laterally 13 feet to their final resting places. So we'll move them just a little bit at first, about six inches, and then if we get things going well, then we'll just pull them all the way in. After more than two years of planning and months of checking and rechecking every detail, the first of three big lifts is complete. Only the expertise and close collaboration between team members made this 10-hour lift successful. MTI, a joint venture of Massman Construction, Trailer Brothers, and IHI. HNTB, Construction Engineer. Mammut, Lifting Company. Applied Geomechanics, Trust Monitoring Company. Majeski and Masters, Engineer of Record. The Louisiana Department of Transportation and Development. And Louisiana Timed Managers. And it's a lot of people doing their job and doing an excellent job. And uh, there's a lot of people who can be real proud of, of what's going on out here today. What's going on out here today will be repeated twice more before the span widening portion of the project is complete. The next big lift is scheduled for fall 2010 and the final lift in early 2011, each with its own unique lifting requirements. The fully refurbished UEP Long Bridge will debut in 2013. Now remember they said it was a 10 hour lift and that animation took only, what, two minutes? <laughs> so, uh, and, and a validation on the 3D modeling um, is on that third lift, um, where apparently what happened was that um, they were concerned about whether the stability frames is going to have enough clearance. And so I was asked to create a three, uh, check the model to make sure that when we swing it that we had enough uh, space, and it turns out we didn't. So what they did was they went ahead and cut the stability frames um, to make sure that it would squeeze under the bridge. And so these are the lift dates that was already mentioned. And, and again, here are some of the pictures from the actual lift itself. And they had the official uh, opening as of this June. And that should do it. Okay. <laughs> Any questions? We have a few minutes. Yeah. Yes. Uh, who was the kind of, who was, who was the animation made for? Was it for the public? Was it for the contractor? Um, was it for y'all's own visual, you know, kind of checking? Or no. It wasn't, well, it wasn't for the public. It was more to convince uh, the contractors that this would be the way to do it. I mean, they were all set on building it, you know, doing the stick build, uh, closing the river down, and, you know, it takes several months and we had to come up with this idea to say it would work, but you know whatever we shown in the drawings, you know they needed to see the visualization to make sure it really worked. So it, originally it was more uh, an inter um, first it was an internal study to see if it would actually work or not, and then it was a matter of convincing the client to say, look, this would be the best way of doing it. And you know it was something that was never done before. Um, you know, you've seen other lifts, and the fact that we had to build four stability frames, and that was the key thing, that we needed that to make sure the trusses were stable, and then to try to lift it all together. You know, I think that we had to follow all those steps. Uh, in the end, it's like it was shown, uh, you know, to the public uh, for, for so, but, uh, but mostly it was more to convince the contractor that this was the way to go. Yes, One more. If, if, if there was no contractor, Uh, 
Uh, <laughs> well, um, no, I think when they, you know, war, you know, we were hired as the con construction engineers, you know, and they were pretty much set on saying, here's how we're going to be building it. It's going to be long. It's going to be delayed. I think that's what the, that was the premise that they were they were going through that assumption, and we were hired to show that we would build it. Now, the main thing is that the Coast Guard is the, the ma major factor. If you were to build it any other way, you would have to close the river down several times. You'd have to put the false work, and that's the biggest driver of the force is that, you know, we couldn't shut down the uh, river so many times for so many days, several months or so. And the other issue is the interruption of traffic. You know, they wanted to keep the bridge um, maintained. You know, it wasn't going to be able to close. And the only time they closed it is for this 48-hour period for each of the lift. So, you know, the, the, the major thing is that we were able to show that we were able to cut down the schedule as well as uh, cut down the cost. Basically, there, there, were, there were onerous Coast Guard requirements. Yes. Met, yes. That's correct. Okay. Yes. I just wonder what kind of liability insurance goes <laughs> <laughs> I, I cannot. <laughs> well, as you could tell, I mean, the first lift did take quite a while. Um, the second and third lift, it did go a lot quicker. And I think that was the biggest concern is, is whether everything would work. Um, and so, you know, fortunately, it did. <laughs>